Riddle me this. How much wood could a jellyfin shuck if a jellyfin could shuck wood? You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. In case you're not familiar with what jellyfin is, it's basically a self-hosted Netflix or Hulu. After installing and configuring it, you can sign in and you'll be presented with a rather sleek looking interface in my opinion. And this is where you can access all your content, your movies, TV shows, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, immediately upon installing it, it's not that useful without pointing it first to your media libraries, which I hope you've obtained legally. But that all is pretty simple and we'll get into that later. There are two main parts to Jellyfin, the Jellyfin client and the Jellyfin server which is the part that is usually referred to by Jellyfin. The client is simply just an interface for accessing the content on your server, and there are clients available for most major platforms. There are native clients for Windows, iOS, Android, etc. And there are integrations for media apps like Kodi, and there is the web client that you can open in any modern web browser. These all work about the same, and the main difference for the clients is that for the native clients and the Kodi plugin, you are able to use either transcoding on the server or direct play to view your content, whereas with the web client, you're stuck with transcoding on the server. This isn't an issue if you have a powerful enough server, but if you're putting the server on something a bit low power, like a Pi, and you want to view some higher quality content like 1080p 60fps or 4K content, you may run into some performance issues. As for the other part, the server, which is what we're going to focus on today, the Jellyfin server is developed to manage, organize, and share your multimedia libraries and is really extensible with a plugin system to add other capabilities. You give it your libraries for TV shows, movies, music, photos, and Jellyfin will fetch any public information that is available for your media so that when you go to view your content, it is a very polished and immersive experience, just like you would see on Hulu or Netflix with episode descriptions. All the TV show episodes are bundled into their own series. You have Rotten Tomato ratings for ratings of the content itself. And this is all just to make it a lot nicer of an experience compared to just browsing through files on a hard drive. Also, there is a neat new feature called Sync Play that was added in Jellyfin version 10.6 that enables you to remotely watch your content in sync with other people, as if you were in the same room. This means that you can still keep up with your movie date nights while quarantining during this pandemic. As for the plugins, these can add some more functionality to Jellyfin as needed, and are developed by the Jellyfin community. These can be things like other authentication methods, live TV and DVR support, admin things like extra logging, etc. And this makes Jellyfin really powerful as it can make it do more than advertised, especially if you're willing to spend some extra time coding plugins to do exactly what you need. There are some other neat things to go over with Jellyfin, like user access control, but we'll take a look at that a little bit later. Now let's take a look at actually installing Jellyfin and using it. Today we're going to focus on the Linux installation method because that's what I've used before. Although I would expect the Windows and Mac OS instructions to be somewhat similar if you want to go down that route. As for the Linux distribution, I'm going to use a mostly standard Debian 10 net install. Again, since that's what I'm used to and comfortable with, but the instructions here really should be the same for other distributions minus some distribution specific things like repository paths and such. If you would like to follow along, or at least copy and paste the commands, you can find a link to the Jellyfin documentation for this process in the video description. So the first step we need to do once we've installed and logged into our new server is make sure that we have the HTTPS apt transport method installed by running sudo apt install apt transport HTTPS hit enter. You'll be prompted for your password that you can type in now. Hit enter. And apparently it was already installed for me, but that may not be so for you. Once that's done, you'll need to add the repository signing key so Debian knows it can trust the Jellyfin repo. This command is a bit of a mouthful, so I won't verbalize it, but basically what it's doing is grabbing the package signing key from the Jellyfin servers and then adding it to the apt key ring. Next, we need to add the official repository for Jellyfin. There may already be an official package available in your distro's repositories, but if not, then this step is what you'll need to do. Again, this command is another mouthful, 
but this one just echoes the repository configuration into a file for the apt package manager to read. From here, you just need to refresh your repository information with a sudo apt update, which can take a second, and then install Jellyfin with sudo apt, sudo apt install Jellyfin. Hit Y for yes, hit enter, and then after a little bit of time, Jellyfin will be installed. For future reference, if you need to manage the Jellyfin service, you can simply use systemctl status jellyfin or service jellyfin command or whatever other service manager that you use. Now that Jellyfin is installed, we can open up a web browser and then head over to the web interface. You'll just need the IP address of your server, colon 8096, and boom, there's Jellyfin for you. You can do some basic setup steps Going with the default English, you can set your password and default user. Uh, let's see, admin account, let's just set admin and then you will not guess this password. Hit next, boom. Now you can set up your media libraries. So personally, I like to keep my TV shows and movies in separate libraries. This is just a personal preference. But so go ahead and click on add media library, content type. Let's start with TV shows, add folder. And then I have a, uh, I have my media folders under varlib, jellyfin, media, and then TV shows. Put that there, hit okay. And then you can set a bunch of other settings like preferred download language, country, the metadata databases, I like choosing saving my metadata info to the .info files and then saving artwork into media folders. And then if you want, you can also enable chapter image extraction for the library. As the description says, the process can be slow and resource intensive. So only choose this if you really want this. I'm going to skip this for now. Feel free to enable it for yourself. I'm going to add a second media library. Let's go movies. And then pretty much I have the same folder path, Varlow Jellyfin, set of TV shows, I have it under movies. Oop, hit OK. Pretty much the same settings. I'm going to do info, safe artwork, and then hit OK. Let's go next. Preferred metadata, preferred metadata language. I'm going to leave those as they are because that's what I want. By configure remote access, this means, is this going to be used as a server or a client? The TLDR is have these settings checked as you see on the screen. Hit next, and you're done. Jellyfin is configured and installed. Let's go ahead and sign in. Did admin, and you will, oops, you, oh my gosh. Let's do you will not guess this password. Don't try to log into this. This server will be down well before the video goes up. Sign in. Boom. I copied over a couple TV shows and some movies. It can take a little bit, especially if you have a large library, for Jellyfin to actually churn through and grab all the metadata and images for your TV shows, movies, and such. So if you want to give it some time, you can. But right now, this all works. If I wanted to go, say, watch, and it does look like it's not quite finished with pulling out the TV shows, but right now, if I want to hit play, it should just play. Look at that. Boom. I'm not going to play that because I don't want to get copyright strict. Strucken? Str stroken? Ah, stricken by disturbed. So that's all the basics for Jellyfin configuration. If you want to configure it a little further, you can hit the little hamburger icon as you saw in the top left. Go to dashboard. From here, the dashboard, as you can see, it has a little running tasks thing and it's still scanning through the media libraries but you can also see some basic information about your system. The server name is Jellyfin Test. Jellyfin version is 10.6.4 operating system. You can also see the latest activities, which for the most part are actions taken by the user, like playing some media, logging in, etc., changing passwords. But so on the left over here, you can see there's a lot of places to go through. I'm not gonna go through all of these because that, that would just be a huge time suck. The main ones you'll want to look at are users, which you can add some more if you want to have some like friends and family logging in and not sharing passwords. 
You can look at libraries if you need to end up adding some more libraries down the road, changing some settings on your current libraries, or getting rid of some. Then you have your playback settings where you can enable hardware acceleration if you have like a graphics card that you throw in like a Jellyfin server. Some other important things to look for on the left side are the plugins tab, where as you can see you can install plugins. Apparently I have some plugins already installed under my plugins. Well, you can go to catalog and then look through all the things here. On my personal server, I use the LDAP authentication plugin, but these can be anything from authentication plugins to two integrations with Kodi, if you want to look at that. Playback reporting. There are a few like reporting things to different websites. I guess there's a push bullet plugin. I'm not sure how that would work or why that's needed. You have email and Slack notifications. There's a lot of cool things in here. So yeah, that's all the basics that you should need to get up and running with Jellyfin. Like looking at the users page and seeing what options are available to each user, looking at some more of the plugins, looking at the, the devices page if you want to manage devices that are added to Jellyfin. Pretty much anything I do right now will be relevant on a case-by-case -case basis, and really that'll be up for you to explore. Keep in mind that this isn't the complete setup that you'll want to run with, and there are numerous things that you can do to improve the setup for various use cases. For example, you'll usually want to have some sort of reverse proxy, like Nginx or Apache, to handle the initial HTTP connections to Jellyfin. You may want to have a load balancer and multiple servers spun up if you want high availability. And you'll definitely want to get an SSL certificate if you want to access this over the internet. But what we set up today should be enough for personal use inside your internal network. Jellyfin really is a great piece of software to self-host your movies and TV shows. And honestly, it almost rivals the experience you see in Netflix and Hulu, with the added benefit that you don't have to worry about any contracts expiring and losing access to content. If your goal is to self-host more of the services that you use online, Jellyfin is a great piece to the immense puzzle. That's actually going to wrap it up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you'll like the video, subscribe to the channel, watch one of the videos down below, or just do whatever it is you need to do to make yourself feel happy. Either way, I will catch you in the next one.